All right, what you're looking at is an Arduino Uno here. And this thing here in the center is a VOM1271. It's a photovoltaic MOSFET driver with integrated fast turnoff. The important point here is that the LED that you see blinking is completely separate on its own power supply from the UNO. This particular chip connects directly to either a mo any type of MOSFET. Here's a IRF 630 and there's a very high powered MOSFET and this is an IGBT That's a, yes, that's an IGBT device that combines a MOSFET with a bipolar transistor for very high powered switching. This particular setup right here can switch 50 amps. That's a lot of power. So we're going to look further into the VOM. 1271 and what we can do with it. Insulated gate bipolar transistors, also known as IGBTs, are a circuit that we should be aware of. It can be used for high speed switching, voltage choppers, power supplies, and H bridge motor controls. This is your host, Louis Laughlin. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. I've actually used this circuit, as can be seen in this photograph here. This is the IGBT here, and these are both MOSFETs. In this case, I'm driving it with a VOM1271 photovoltaic optocoupler that's operating through a uh, Arduino Uno. Let's look at the plate here that my mouse arrow is on. An IGBT is essentially, in its simplest form, a PNP power transistor controlled by a by an in-channel MOSFET transistor. This gives us the adva several advantages. We get the voltage and current characteristics of a high-powered bipolar transistor, but we get the simplified driver circuit of a MOSFET. Let's look a little closer at what this comes down to. Let's look at some MOSFETs before we get into the circuit. All right, here is a view of one case style. They usually come in these power transistor case styles. You have three pins, gate, collector, emitter. Remember, if we run back to the original plate, we have a PNP transistor and a MOSFET. But you notice the emitter on the PNP transistor becomes the collector. Its collector becomes the emitter. And of course, the MOSFET input becomes the gate. The particular ones in my test circuit I used was the IXGH25N100. These I had left over from when I was working on plasma cutter chopper boards in around 1998, approximately. So these are a good the ones I was using are at least 20 years old. There's been some improvements. But these things handle an amazing 1,000 volts at 50 amps. And it's volt. And this is a characteristic you must be aware of. This is the voltage collector emitter saturation was 3.5 volts. That's one of the characteristics that you're looking for is, is a low VCE sat. Notice one thing though, this particular unit has no internal flywheel diodes. Let's look at a more modern version. This is the FGA 25N120. If you notice right here in the spec sheet, the VCE SAT is 2 volts. So that's an improvement.
here is the case style, here is the symbol. These do have an internal damper or flywheel diode or whatever you want to call it. All the modern ones I've found do. All right. What are the characteristics of this device? According to the spec sheet, it has a 1200 volt rating. It's gate emitter voltage instead of gate source. It's going to be gate emitter. It's plus and minus 20 volts, very similar to a MOSFET. But the collector current at 25 degrees Celsius is 50 amps. Now that's a lot of... Imagine if you were running this thing at a... Tw uh, say a thousand volts at just 10 amps you're talking about 10,000 watts of power being sh shifted around here that's a lot of power now let's look at the FGPF 4633 this one is rated at 330 volts these type are used in things like inductive heating element circuits used on ranges its forward voltage collector emitter SAT is 1.55 volts at 70 amps. That's pretty good. That's a lot of power. and that's a, What this means is a low VCE means it doesn't heat up a ridiculous amount. This is sort of a plastic TO220 type case. Here is your symbol again. This one is rated to, for... Uh, at 330 volts and the gate to emitter voltage is 30 volts not 20 so a little higher than 30 these type could lend themselves very easily to being used in an H bridge motor control the collector current according to the spec sheet can be up to 300 amps wow Imagine getting four of these, and you could replace a MOSFET with one of these. Imagine being able to switch 300 amps. Nice. Let's take another. Let's take another look at another item before we. This one is the is another type. Um, the Infineon IHW 20N120. Blah blah blah. All right. It, of course, has an internal damper diode. As you can see here, hopefully it's not cut off the picture. Here is your case style. Again, this is made to be heat synced. What are my characteristics? 1200 volts at 20 amps and a VCE sat at 25 degrees Celsius of 1.48 volts nice item what okay so that's our the theory and that's what's available what can we use them for let's look at that next all right what you're looking at here is a schematic for a Panasonic microwave oven I've repaired scores of ovens over the years and I have seen some of them with these type switching power supplies Let's blow this up a little bit so you can see a little better on it, and we'll talk about the circuit. On the inputs, 120 volts AC. These are a transformers or whatever that's used with the control circuitry. Well, we're interested in this. We have a full wave bridge rectifier. We have a filter capacitor. Q701 here is our IGBT. This is drive circuitry. It goes down to this control board, which is on a plug. I don't have a schematic to the control board. And the IGBT is driving this transformer. If you've ever worked with microwave ovens, you know the magnetron transformers are heavy, bulky. They're expensive. They weigh a lot. This, even with the more complex circuitry, is cheaper and in the long run probably better. The IGBT is switched on and off at a high frequency. Don't ask me what it is. I don't know. Several kilohertz, maybe 
28 kilohertz, don't know, the spec doesn't say. Then you have this transformer, it usually has a ferrite core transformer. One winding goes to the magnetron filament. The magnetron is still a vacuum tube, nonetheless. It's just a very high frequency oscillating vacuum tube. You'll notice here we have D701, D702, C703, and 704. These are, this forms a voltage doubler. Now these capacitors don't look that big as far as value go. That's because when you switch at high frequencies, you can significantly reduce the size, weight, and cost of the transformer. So a transformer that might have weighed six, seven, eight pounds can be reduced to about a pound and handle the same amount of power. If you're curious, here is a picture of the transformer. It's not very big if you look at the size of the components around it. You're talking about this transformer handling, what, 2,000 watts, maybe 2,500 watts on this fairly small transformer. It is far cheaper to manufacture this little board here. There's your IGBT right there. That's your full wave bridge rectifier and so forth. And that's probably your four microfarad cap. Nonetheless, this entire board to manufacture probably costs a fraction of that big, heavy transformers that they used to use. Now you know one of the main uses of IGBTs is in high power switching power supplies and chopper circuits. What are some of our uses for IGBTs? Let's look at this example circuit here. This is a 12 volt DC to 24 volt AC inverter. The first thing that we do in these, and this could be connected to a solar panel, a 12 volt car battery, whatever. We can use one of these devices switched on at a fairly high frequency to boost the 12 volts DC up to 170 volts DC. It's done through, this is a switching, this is sort of a switching circuit, this is a filter cap, and we have 170 volts. Now we have four more IGBTs arranged in an H-bridge configuration. I didn't show the control circuitry. This is just a generic schematic. And by switching on these, trans, these IGBT transistors, this one here and here, and then off and back and forth. If you've done anything with my H-bridge circuits, you can stick these into any H-bridge circuit you want. They'll work the same as a MOSFET. Um, thus, you can get 120 volts out. Now, the circuit's a little more complicated than what you see, particularly the control circuit. You want a sine wave out, but in its most generic form, it'll probably produce sort of a square wave. But that's how this works. You use one to convert the low voltage to a high voltage. Then you're going to chop the higher voltage with a H-bridge configuration to produce a great big square wave that's cleaned up. And you plug in your electric drill, and your electric drill doesn't care. Here's a circuit that I am very familiar with. It's a high voltage chopper circuit for a plasma cutter. We have a three phase input. These six diodes form a full wave bridge rectification function. This produces 650 volts across this cap. These IGBTs are used in a type of H bridge configuration that switches the current path back and forth, it forms a square wave in itself from that 650 volts DC. You have a 650 volt peak to peak square wave. X and Y goes to a step down transformer which, go, which connects to the cutting head 
when you're doing plasma cutting or welding, you don't use high voltages generally at the cutting head itself. Anyway, that transform this drives a transformer that supplies the low voltage, high current power for the to cut steel. In some cases, up to several inches. So this is one this is one use of what is called a chopper circuit. Normally, DC will not work with a transformer, but if you chop it with this, a square a big square wave works just fine. This includes my introduction to insulated gate bipolar transistors. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com and remember. This could be the answer for some of your really higher power, high voltage H-bridge circuits. Thanks for listening.